Hi, and welcome back. This is Andy, KE4GKP, and welcome back to the Ham Whisperer and Lesson 29 in the Technician Operator Element 2 exam. In this lesson, we're going to cover the THC questions, which goes over operating activities. The THC section of questions cover radio direction finding, radio control, contests, special event stations, and basic linking over the internet. All right, let's get started. Which of the following methods is used to locate sources of noise interference or jamming? All right, this is called radio direction finding. And radio direction finding is the process of finding the sources of radio signals. So it, basically what direction are they coming from? You triangulate that and you're good to go. Now, not only does radio direction finding try to locate sources of noise interference and jamming, but you can use them for legitimate radio signals as well, like uh, transmitter hunting and a couple other activities. But radio direction finding is used to locate sources of jamming and interference. Which of these items would be useful for a hidden transmitter hunt? Well, a directional antenna would be useful on a transmitter hunt. Now, what a directional antenna does is exactly what it says. It, it focuses on radio waves in one particular direction. And the advantage of this is that not only will it focus uh, received radio waves in one particular direction, allowing you to pinpoint what where that hidden transmitter is, but when you transmit, it will focus the majority of your transmitter power in that direction as well. So if you kind of take a directional antenna and you kind of wave it back and forth, the position you're in, that antenna is in, when that signal strength is the strongest, is usually the direction of that transmitter. And that's how it's used on a transmitter hunt. What popular operating activity involves contacting as many stations as possible during a specified period of time? Well, this is called contesting. And essentially what will happen is that a, a organization will put out a contest and give specific parameters to what constitutes a contact and how much time you have and what bands you can use and what modes you can use. And essentially what you, within those parameters what you need to do is make as many contacts as possible in a specified time frame. And this is a great way to develop operating skills and it's also a great way to get a bunch of plaques and certificates to put on your wall. So if, if you get an opportunity to try it, I definitely recommend doing some contesting. Which of the following is good procedure when contacting another station in a radio contest? All right, the answer is send only the minimum information needed for proper identification and the contest exchange. Now, most contests will have specific criteria for what counts as a contact, and most of the time it's the call sign, location, and signal report. Now, you want as many contacts as possible in the short time frame, so you need to keep the, the actual contact as short as possible. So if you're talking to somebody in a contest, and they seem a little bit rude with trying to get you off the air, that's probably why they're ready to move on to the next contact. What is a grid locator? Well, a grid locator is a letter number designator assigned to a geographic location. So the world is divided up into grids, and for amateur radio purposes, this is a great way to provide your location or know the locations of others. And this is especially useful in UHF and VHF communications when you're dealing with shorter distance communications that don't exceed country or state borders. So a letter number designator assigned to a geographic area is a grid locator. How is access to an IRLP node accomplished? The answer is by using DTMF signals. All right, so you need to know some acronyms in this one to get it right. IRLP stands for Internet Radio Link Project. And what it is is it allows you a radio to access a distant repeater by sending the signal through the Internet. So basically you can um, basically access a repeater in like Washington State if you're in Ohio by, by sending your signal through the internet. Now access to the internet um, is achieved through things called nodes which are accessed by using DTMF to dial in. So DTMF stands for dual tone multi-frequency and is essentially the touch tone you hear when you push a, a, a number on your telephone's keypad. So you use your radio's keypad to use a pin to get into these nodes to get access to IRLP. So how is access to IRLP node accomplished? By using DTMF. What is the maximum power allowed for transmitting telecommand signals to radio controlled models? All right, this is easy. It's one watt. One watt is all you get to control your radio controlled airplane on am amateur frequencies. So one watt, radio controlled models, and that's it. What is required in place of on-air station identification when sending signals to a radio control model using amateur frequencies? All right, the answer you're looking for is a label indicating the licensee's name, call sign, and address must be affixed to the transmitter. Now, I've seen a couple guys use radio controlled 
um, airplanes on amateur frequencies and a lot of them will take a banner or some sort of flag and stick it on the antenna with this information on it the antenna of their, their little controller now the bottom line is you just need to have the information on the transmitter somewhere to be in compliance how might you obtain a list of active nodes that use VoIP well the answer is from a repeater directory and first of all, VoIP stands for Voice Over Internet Protocol. And if you ever use Skype or Magic Jack, those are both systems that use VoIP. Now, and this is a really strange question. You really got to look at the other answers on the exam um, to get this one right. And you also need to know that a great deal of nodes are associated with repeaters. Therefore, a repeater director would be the best place to look. So if you know that nodes are associated with repeaters for VoIP, a repeater directory is probably the best answer. How do you select a specific IRLP node when using a portable transceiver? Well, the answer is you, you use the keypad to transmit the IRLP node ID. And that, that's the answer. You use the keypad. Now, IRLP stands for Internet Radio Linking Project. And this is a way to access VoIP via your transceiver. And it's usually going through a repeater. Also, you need to know that to access the node, you need to know the DTMF code for the repeater, which is determined by the owner of the node. What name is given to an amateur radio station that is used to connect other amateur stations to the internet? Now this is called a gateway. And essentially these gateways provide access to communications over the internet via your radio. And this can enable a UHF or VHF radio to communicate with another station thousands of miles away, which you would never hope to do on a VHF or UHF radio because you're linking through the internet. So a gateway is a name given to an amateur radio station that is used to connect other amateur stations to the internet. What is meant by Voice Over Internet Protocol, or VoIP, as used in amateur radio? All right, it's a method of delivering voice communications over the internet using digital techniques. So there's a bunch of ways you can talk over the internet. Um, chat rooms, social media, and uh, stuff like Skype use VoIP, if you're going to actually speak voice over the internet. So basically, it's a digital means of communicating voice through the internet. So what is meant by voice over internet pro protocol as used in amateur radio it's a method of delivering voice communications over the internet using digital techniques what is the internet radio linking project or IRLP it's a technique to connect amateur radio systems such as repeaters via the internet using voice over internet protocol so IRLP is not what you would think of in normal internet use it's about using VoIP to connect one radio system to a repeater somewhere far away. So you could use your VHF 2 meter radio to talk to somebody, you know, a thousand or two thousand miles away by connecting to a repeater there through the internet. So what is the Internet Radio Linking Project? It's a technique to connect amateur radio systems such as repeaters via the internet using voice over internet protocol. And now it's time for the T8C quiz. So take out a pencil and paper, number 1 through 13. When you're done with the quiz, go to hamwhisper.com and check your answers under the exam answers page under the T8C link. And I'm going to go through the questions pretty quick as usual, so if you need more time, just pause the video and take all the time you need. So let's get started with the quiz. Question 1. Which of the following methods is used to locate sources of noise interference or jamming? A. Echolocation. B. Doppler radar. C, radio direction finding, or D, phase locking. Question two, which of these items would be useful for a hidden transmitter hunt? A, calibrated SWR meter, B, a directional antenna, C, a calibrated noise bridge, or D, all of these choices are correct. Question three, what popular operating activity involves contacting as many stations as possible during a specified period of time? A, contesting, B, net operations, C, public service events, or D, simulated emergency exercises. Question 4. Which of the following is good procedure when contacting another station in a radio contest? A, be sure to sign only the last two letters of your call if there is a pileup calling the station. B, work the station twice to be sure that you are in his log. C, send only the minimum information needed for proper identification and the contest exchange or D, all of these choices are correct. Question 5. What is a grid locator? A, a letter number designator assigned to a geographic location. B, a letter number designator assigned to an azimuth and elevation. C, an instrument for neutralizing a final amplifier. Or D, an instrument for radio direction finding. 
Question 6. How is access to an IRLP node accomplished? A. By obtaining a password which is sent via voice to the node. B. By using DTMF signals. C. By entering the proper internet password. Or D. By using CTCSS tone codes. Question 7. What is the maximum power allowed when transmitting telecommand signals to radio controlled models? A. 500 milliwatts. B. 1 watt. C. 25 watts or D, 1500 watts. Question 8. What is required in place of on-air station identification when sending signals to a radio control model using amateur frequencies? A, voice identification must be transmitted every 10 minutes. B, Morse code ID must be sent once per hour. C, a label indicating the licensee's name, call sign, and address must be affixed to the transmitter. And D, a flag must be affixed to the transmitter antenna with a station call sign in one inch high letters or larger. Question 9. How might you obtain a list of active nodes that use VoIP? A. From the FCC rulebook. B. From your local emergency coordinator. C. From a repeater directory. Or D. From the local repeater frequency coordinator. Question 10. How do you select a specific IRLP node when using a portable transceiver? A. Choose a specific CTCSS tone. B. Choose the correct DSC tone. C. Access the repeater auto patch. Or D. Use the keypad to transmit the IRLP node ID. Question 11. What name is given to an amateur radio station that is used to connect other amateur stations to the internet? A. A gateway. B. A repeater. C. A digipeter. Or D. A beacon. Question 12. What is meant by voice over internet protocol, VoIP, as used in amateur radio? A. A set of rules specifying how to identify your station when linked over the internet to another station. B. A set of guidelines for working DX during contests using internet access. C. A technique for measuring the modulation quality of a transmitter using remote sites monitored via the internet. Or D. A method of delivering voice communications over the internet using digital techniques. And question 13. What is the Internet Radio Linking Project, or IRLP? A. A technique to connect amateur radio systems such as repeaters via the Internet using voice over Internet protocol. B. A system for providing access to websites via amateur radio. C. A system for informing amateurs in real time of the frequency of active DX stations. Or D. A technique for measuring signal strength of an amateur transmitter via the Internet. And that is the end of Lesson 29 in the T8C section. And now that you're done with the quiz, be sure to stop by Ham Whisperer and check your answers. And until next time in Lesson 30, this is Andy, KE4GKP, saying 73, and I hope to hear you on the air soon.